are preparing live stream. We are live. We are live. Hello, ladies. Let me Hello. Open Facebook and see if comments come through. All right, all right, all right. So I'm I'm really excited to have this conversation. It's going to be pretty organic. Um, for those of you who don't know, Shannon and Eleni are, well, now you get, now you have the pleasure of knowing who they are because they're just amazing. <laughs> uh, and they are my, so I don't want to say my, they're School of Love's support coaches. So Eleni is going to be supporting um, and has already supported. I should start with saying Eleni has done, Eleni and Shannon are both alumni. So Eleni did the fall round spring round in 2021 yeah yeah ended in the fall um for the group that is calling in love and she successfully has done so <laughs> <laughs> and then eleni supported this last round um and just bringing all her magic so coming into the may cohort eleni will be supporting the women who are calling in love so it's all led and guided by me and we have these beautiful and um, support coaches to add their magic and Shannon is um, also an alumni of Inner Circle. You've done two rounds. It's amazing. <laughs> Shannon's been married for over a decade. Yeah, I've been. We've been married for for twelve years. Thirteen mm -hmm. coming up this summer. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so Shannon will be supporting the women who are in established relationships. I'm really excited to have you guys here because we. I think like one of the things that we were talking about is that people don't really. It, it, sometimes it's hard to get a feel for like what happens in these experiences and I'm sure you both felt that before coming into like what is it really like to be in there and I know when I join a, a program especially a group program it's such a leap of faith like who's going to be there how's it going to be what is even really going to happen is this the right decision do you maybe want to both take a moment to share and, and I don't I don't need to be like necessarily leading this at all, but maybe just to get us started. Um, where you were when you came in and then like where you were at the beginning and, and what was for you, like what was it like to come out on the other side? Like what kind of did you gain from it or what did you move through? Shannon, go first. <laughs> I was going to say the same to you, but I could go first. I will say, so I, I'm a quick start leap before I even think about things kind of person. And I don't know if I came in with any intention or expectations or fears really at all. But what I did, what drew me to Diana was just the way she exudes this beautiful trust in her love with Jack. And it, I wanted it. <laughs> I really wanted it. And I, I wasn't feeling that in my own relationship. Not that I don't trust my partner, but that the love that I, that we have didn't have the same sense of aliveness that I was yearning for. And in a moment of really not alive moment, I was like, Diana, tell me all the things <laughs> in an email, frantic email. Like I looked at couples counseling. I don't know if it's for us. I don't know. And you know, in the course of our conversations, Diana and I, she said, you know, what about this? What about this pathway, this group program? And initially I was like, hmm, you know, a little resistant, mostly not at all about the group program, but about, you know, me having to invest more time in my own self. Like, why me? Why not us together? Mm -hmm. And uh, that was my big hesitation at the beginning was like, I feel like I do all the work in our relationship. And like, why do I have to do more? And really what I would say on the other side is, I don't do more after having gone through this process. I do way less. It feels so much less effortful to be in love with my partner, to be creating the love that I want, to create space for the love that's there to come alive is what I have at absorbed more than anything else it's not like I've done anything different if anything I've done less mm, oh my god I love that and I feel like part of it too is also awakening to the ways Dan was doing things that maybe weren't so visible before 
Yeah, I mean, I could spend a whole hour talking about all the things I was noticing he was doing wrong and missing all the things he was doing for us and, you know, in love with me. Like, <laughs> I can talk about that for hours, but I think that's a, the most beautiful invitation, you know, even just from this live to begin to look for the evidence of what's beautiful right in front of you. Yeah, and like I would much. go on art calls. It was like always perfect timing on the group calls. Your partner would come in with like tea or coffee every time. <laughs> and you were like in your throne receiving. <laughs> I know, I just, thank you. <laughs> He's so lovely. <laughs> he is, I love that. And that's like one of the things I love about School of Love too, is like we love, we love men in the program. Mm -hmm. We, yes. love, we love them, we love on them, we choose to see them in that light and it's really transformational. And it's not, it's not the same kind of dynamic that exists out there in the world. You know, I think there is this like almost so unwritten social norm that some, one of the things that you talk about as a woman with your friends is things your husband isn't doing right or the part your partner is like, yeah, you know, right. on them. And, yeah, yeah, it's not okay. And it has been such a refreshing thing to never, to always uphold them as like whole beings who deserve our kindness. Yeah. 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 I love that. What about you, Eleni? Oh, well, when I feel it was a transition getting into group coaching with you, but for me, I had started exploring dating again. And I had a very go-getter approach about dating. I was the one who sought out men. And I believe that I had to do the bulk of the work if a man was going to desire me. So uh, very quickly, when I started working with you, I, I realized that, you know, I had a performing complex. And so uh, there was that, there was a very strong anxious attachment. I was very much in my head with how I approached dating, um, you know, fear-based, control-based, wanting to know how things went. I shared too much of myself too soon mm -hmm. in the hopes that I could be fully transparent mm -hmm. and the man would know whether he wanted me or not, not realizing that although my intention was good behind it, it was actually too much too soon um and so I started we met at an event I started following your group you yeah. had a free master class I joined I won a free one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. and I started to really feel the impact of your energy of your presence and I realized that you had a way of being and doing that I didn't and so when the time was right I found myself in in your program and for me, I would say the biggest, the biggest shifts were the fact that I started to believe that the type of man that I was seeking did exist, which yeah. was, was a big shift for me, like to believe that you're worthy to want what you want and that it exists is something I think that a lot of women don't believe. And there was also the strong sense of self-love and self-honoring. And just the whole premise and theme of honoring yourself and honoring another and seeing it as an honorable journey mm -hmm. um, really changed how I saw myself. And I think the type of men that I attracted on my way to attracting my now partner. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing that I'm still working on, but is really making strides is the, the, the anxious tendencies. I am finally at a place where I feel safer in the spaciousness and I see it as a benefit and something that is healthy and something that feeds my relationship and does not need to equal the fact that space equals distance mm -hmm. you know so these are really really big big wins for me and also just learning how to communicate the way a man does mm -hmm. and respecting that dance has, you know, I wrote a piece recently in, in the group about that. Those were the, the big things. And I mean, I met my partner, I think three months into the program. Mm -hmm. And now in like two weeks, we're celebrating nine months. Mm -hmm. So 
yeah, it's going really, really well. And I, I feel safe. I feel secure and it feels really special. And I feel like he's a king, right? So I, that's the whole sense of like honoring and finding honorable people and becoming an honorable person, I think was one of my favorite things about, um, about this program. Yeah, I love that. Oh, I love that. He sent me the cutest picture this morning of you and him painting. It's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> I love it too when you see couples and you're like, it just looks like they match, you know? Like I would say, mm -hmm. like there's just like this similar vibe kind of thing. Like I know Jack and I have that or like curly hair, big smiles, <laughs> like similar vibes, you know? Can you guys touch on like what... How do I want to say this? Like group experience, like what it's like to be in group and even just like the format of our, you know, having our calls and the one-on-one -on -one time and the Voxer and the hypnosis, like just so people can really get a feeling like what it's like to be on the inside and be in the journey. You know, sometimes some people think six months sounds too long. Some people think it's not enough. Like I'm, I would just love to hear very authentically what it's been like for you both. I'm just because I'm going to cry. <laughs> like, I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> so Sh Shannon's reaction is very honest. Usually yeah. that's what I feel. Um, it becomes a sisterhood. That's that's what it is. But I think what it, what is also really beautiful and what women might not realize as they sign in is that you are very intentional, Diana, about yeah. who you bring in. And... And that's not to say that you exclude anyone. It's just there's this vibe. There's this vibe. There's this alignment. And so all of the women in are women who are ready to do the work and are ready to see their up-leveling. And so when you walk into just that first session, it's like you already feel the energetics that you're in a room full of powerful women who are ready to change things up. And I think that just that energy is empowering in and of itself but what it is it's a it's a space where you're held mm -hmm. it's a space where you get to feel like you're not alone mm -hmm. it's a space where you get to be celebrated and in the hardest times it's also a space where you get a room full of powerful mirrors mm -hmm. that reflect your truth back at you and in the messy middle of things are able to really be held accountable in a supportive and loving way so that the change that you're so much yearning for is actually possible. And I think there is a lot that happens in one-on-one -on -one coaching, but when you're able to have a room full of accountability, it's another level of support that cannot be measured so that's what it feels like off the top of my head you both have such a beautiful way with words I'm like take me away <laughs> uh, yeah. I I mean I did not expect to shed any tears <laughs> in this call but I wish I had a contact. pardon it's gonna happen it sounds like <laughs> we all do <laughs> I describe my emotions as like sometimes being so overwhelming they just come out of my eyeballs and um, this is one of those moments when you think about like sharing space with the women that I've shared space with in both the rounds that I've participated in I mean I think the, the beautiful thing about group coaching is that the group creates its own magic you know basic based on who is in the group so you know, the two groups that I participated in were so wildly different and so wildly beautiful in their own ways, because every single person coming into that room, into that group brings their own special uniqueness. So, and to get to bear witness to another person's unfoldment as they mm -hmm. explore, yeah. you know, what's holding them back, what's been holding them back from experiencing the kind of love that they desire is such an honor you know it is such an honor to get to bear witness to you know so many big things right like for me I've, I'm always quite comfortable being vulnerable about what I've experienced 
And that's not everybody's comfort zone. And that's not a requirement of participating that you like expose all of the deepest, darkest parts of yourself that you're not ready to look at, right? Like that's not what I'm saying happens there. It's very, you know, go as deep as you wish to go. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, knowing, knowing the growth journey that I had been on, I was really ready to uncover what was holding me back from believing that I could receive the kind of love that I really deeply desired to, to believe in trust of my partner as a man, you know, to trust men yeah. <laughs> was an important part of my journey. And it continues to be an important part of my journey. You know, that spaciousness that I think is so like important and necessary can feel really scary can it, yes. for me anyway. It can feel scary for me. To can trust you? the space is terrifying. <laughs> and yes. so to have the time, to have the like, I love the I love being in circle with the women, like when we have our calls. But I have found, and I have found like the Voxer support that you, that we get, like we all get to have this kind of group walkie talkie to one another to be so important because it's not in, it's not in front of a call typically where I'm like, oh, I feel terrified of the spaciousness. <laughs> it's, it's mm -hmm. the moments in between the calls where I'm noticing, you know, I feel unsettled or I'm like, you know, in my old pattern and how can you help me unravel this? And then you know, to be, to have this like upswelling of love and compassion and questioning and helping me to process and hearing me and seeing me, it's, yeah, irreplaceable. Yeah. That, that it makes me think of something important also to mention about group and seeing how they've witnessed both group in singles and in relationship. Mm -hmm. supporting this round I think that it's also we have this instinct as women to go to our person right to our friends and it's really difficult when you might not necessarily have the same perspective or standards or experience or understanding that you want so much to be supported but sometimes the supported of the the, the, the support of the person you most would yearn that from does not feel aligned yes and I, right and so I think what's really beautiful about this program is that we're learning new healthy ways of being and doing and feeling and connecting that are really based in experience in in research in 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 growth and all of the women start to speak the same language so when you're in the midst let's say of getting brave enough to start dating again or dating differently and you start to up level your standards your your reflex might be to go you know see your girlfriends but they're not thinking the same way as you anymore and so the group holds you up to these new standards and they all speak the same language and similarly in relationship that Shannon was sharing previously of like you know the men bashing oh my husband this oh my partner that I can't stand it where we're in this circle now of like oh no but I do want to honor my husband and I or I do want to honor my partner and I want to bring him closer to me and speak of him so it's like knowing that you have this go-to place for six months that when things get hard when things get challenging or you want to finally celebrate that that thing that you've been striving to move past and you finally did it and everybody in there knows how hard it's been for you yes it makes it all that much all that more meaningful. meaningful yes yes i am inside of experience. am i echoing i think we all are, we all are. one little tiny moment nice um i'm inside of a group experience right now like as a participant and there's something like I needed to move through and you know when I bring it up to Jack he just like wants to solve it or wants to make me feel better and but and that's a, like a very masculine approach right like how can I just like fix this for my woman right now but that's not what I needed right but so then I have this group of women that I'm a part of and like I can bring it to them and they just hold me and they let me cry and they're comfortable with my crying and they're just like just there with me as I process the things and move it through my body and come out to my own 
wisdom on the other side and it is a gift because I know like that's intense that would be intense Jack can hold some of that but it's not it's not all for him and and sometimes I don't need a solution I just need you to witness me having a moment because oftentimes we have a hard time facing those moments on our own but doing this work is like the invitation to face those things so that they can move out of you. Do you know what I mean? Like we all do our, our own inner work, but then when you're in a group and there's something about the attention on one area of your life for half a year that is transformative, right? Like when we can really give attention and keep coming back to that work, like every time we meet, every time we talk, it's an invitation to come back to your inner work where we typically want to hide from some of those things. It's like this continuous invitation for six months. What do you guys think about like, okay, I'd love to give also like a feeling for, you know, as we move through the six months. So as a group, we meet every two weeks, but there's so much that happens in between, you know, one-on-one -on -one with me, one-on-one -on -one with your support coaches, group hypnosis sessions, Voxer. But in those sessions, we kind of, we, we have some sessions that are more like lessons and discussion and some that are hot seats. So for those who don't know what a hot seat is, it's basically two hours for us to talk, answer questions for me to coach you. Um, you know, like it goes really deep. Like, do you wanna talk about anything you've witnessed inside of those sessions? Like the hot seats, the lessons, like any of it? Go for it, Shannon. Um, I'm formulating my thoughts because there's so many things to say. So if you haven't gotten to sit inside of Diana's energy before, what, and I hadn't, I hadn't participated in any of the master classes that Diana has shared or any of those things. I just kind of had known of Diana. And um, what I have really deeply appreciated about Diana is that she she's guiding us to in all the all the ways that she guides us you know whether it's one of the lessons where she's sharing wisdom that we can then integrate it's slow it's not like there's no performative act you know i'm i love to learn i love to be a good student i love to like do the work i love to do the homework i love to do the things <laughs> And I remember saying at one point in the first round, I was like, well, what am I doing? <laughs> I don't I don't know if I'm being a good enough student in this. <laughs> Can you I feel like I'm laughing at myself in in my like. Even in that, there was this element of not trusting the process, like this growth edge of mine, which was to trust and do less and trust that, you know, whatever it was that was planting within me. So if Diana is sharing out something inside of a lesson, it's like a seed being planted inside. And through the rest of the process, that seed is being nurtured through all the ways, right? Like all the words, all of the affirmations, all of the introspection, all of the hypnosis sessions, all of the hot seats, like it's all, you know, continuing to nurture the seeds that that we are choosing to sow in ourselves, whether, you know, we all come in with various different intentions. So I would say that the work is so slow and almost like unnoticeable. <laughs> Sometimes mm. it feels that way, but it's so transformative. But when it's come to hot seats, what I love the most was you know, the care and attention. It's almost like nobody else exists in the group. It's just me, you know, just me. And everyone else around is like holding space for Diana to do what Diana does and to hold space for that person to feel whatever that person is feeling. So I felt so held. And then, you know, as she would guide us into our bodies to like really feel what was coming up for us and allow that to move through was so... Mm, I'm not sure what the word is really like healing isn't really a sufficient word but it's the one that's coming to mind but um yeah well yeah. you go ahead um you said so much I think I think what I'd have to add is there's this sense of whether the hot seat is for you or for someone else 
you know, I think a lot of times when people are considering growth, they're like, will I have, will I get out of it enough for myself? And the funny thing is, is that we forget, you know, that people are reflections of us. And so even in the times where you feel like, oh, you know, uh, I might not get as much time or whatever, or maybe not any time at all that day because somebody else needed a little bit more time. This beautiful thing happens that somehow in somebody else's process, you get the very message that you needed to hear, or you got the very resolution that you were looking for, or the fact that you're able to witness somebody else and their deep vulnerability and humanness gives you a lot more self-compassion for your own vulnerability and humanness in that moment. So there's something just so human and beautiful about healing in company of another human that is not quite as deep as being in your, your, your healing on your own. And it's also very empowering as well. Like I, I think one of the biggest gifts that I never was expecting is that a lot of people from my cohort wrote to me after and say, you, you, you inspired me with your courage or with, you know, the way you were trying to move through your own challenges and to also know, you know, if you're that type of woman who likes to have an impact on others, that just by you sharing your voice and your journey within a group, you can make other women feel more empowered and more self-loving and self-compassionate is, is, an, is a bonus gift <laughs> that you're not expecting. You know what I mean? It's, it's really beautiful. It is. And it's really beautiful even for me to guide that. You know, there's like this, this like, it's like I go into this like zone, you know, even if you've seen it a few times too, when there's like someone who really needs to move some, through something and we all just like sh hold, hold that person and that person was like, oh, I'm taking too much space or, and we all just like, no, we've got, we've, we're holding the space for you and we're going to be with you as you move through this and we can all feel that kind of like we're going through the process with her and we're shedding the layers. Like even as I'm coaching, I'm like, I'm feeling the layers shed as well. I wonder if we can give, and not too long, and, and, and there's, there's so much we can talk about, but I wonder if we can give some like tangible shifts or results that you've witnessed in some of the women, whether like in the women you've supported Eleni or, for both of you just been alongside of in the journey it's just like ideas of like what people could expect like what can they expect to see change or be different so I think the biggest shift is having a sense of deeper self-love and self-worth mm -hmm. just as a basis I think it's the the biggest foundational work of of the program and and what you emanate in your messaging and I think that everybody who I've witnessed through that goes through your program has that shift to to the, the degree that they're open to yeah. um, another one is starting to believe that they're worthy of things that they didn't think were worthy enough mm -hmm. of before um, really starting to have a deep awareness of older patterns and tangibly identifying newer patterns and being held in that process of changing them, um, calling in expanders, so people who are changing the way they they date. Let's say for the people who are calling in love, for the women who are calling in love, and even they might not be their final partner, or their next season partner. At least they've up leveled the way that they date, right? Some people actually finding relationships. Uh, moving in together already <laughs> crazy stage you know we had a few like women get engaged from both the groups yeah mm -hmm. yeah and I think in relationship from what I've witnessed in Shannon's group you tell me more Shannon but what is the most exciting for me to witness as I go through a new relationship is how much appreciation and loving um women start to show their their partners but also that that witnessing like oh my god he is actually showing up for me if I take the time to notice it and see 
his worth as well right so when we start doing our own self-worth we 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 realize it in another yeah yeah I would add for sure just this like a new lens through which to look at not only your relationship with your partner but other relationships too like you know this work on relationships doesn't just apply to our partners right like Mm -hmm. I can speak to my own experience of like being able to shift patterns in my relationship with my sister and being able to navigate setting boundaries with other family members with more ease and confidence because I believe that it's what I need and I can do so in a loving way or, you know, women who have adult children or children who are who are getting to be adults, you know, to be able to, to navigate the changing dynamics of relationship over time. You know, a lot of the people that I've been in circle with have navigated other relationships with like not just their partner. <laughs> and mm-hmm. Because, you know, the way we show up in all our relationships, it's very common. You know, the way I show up with my partner isn't that different than the way that I show up with my sister. I have the same, you know, natural tendencies towards an anxious attachment and it's going to affect all of my relationships, even in my work. (laughs) So, you know, I was joking, you know, my anxious attachment to my business. And so there's just so many ways, so many layers. Um, What are other ways? I think um, learning healthier beliefs, you know, creating an identity as an empowered self right? Mm -hmm. Like stepping into our empowered selves. What that looked like for me was, you know, that was a huge part of why I wanted to join Mm -hmm. the program. I was like, how is it that Diana exudes this goddess energy? I don't see myself as that. My goddess self is gorgeous. And I feel so much better, not better, but like more able to feel like I can easily self-express who I am through the way that I even, you know, dress. It's not at all like I'm trying to dress a certain way for my partner. I'm doing this for myself and embracing and accepting, you know, my body and my sexuality and all these things, you know. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of this round, I think one of the things that Diana had asked, she does this like back, I always call it a backdoor inquiry. Is that the right word? Backdoor inquiry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when it was, um, my sexuality and then you fill in the blank and my my response my like automatic response was it's none of your damn business mm-hmm. <laughs> and now to be able to speak about it mm-hmm. because I feel comfortable speaking about it is so cool it's so magnificent we didn't even talk about any of that stuff it's just because I've changed my own beliefs about what I am able to allow for myself to experience And I would say that's similar for many of the women in relationships, at least, to allow ourselves to experience the kind of love that we wish to receive of ourselves, from ourselves, but also from the people around us. And one of the things, I don't know how much you guys can hear, Sophia. Oh, it's not too loud. Okay. One of the things, too, that I'm reflecting is even on or reflecting on is like one of the women in our current round who's like, people are going up to her and being like, what's up with your relationship? Like, you guys look so in love. Like, what's going on? What are you doing? Like, he loves you so much. And and even like just observing your partners say new things to you, you know, after decades of being together, in some cases, like just saying these things you've never heard them say. And it's because if your partner is ready and willing and open, they will reflect the changes you're making. And when people say, why should I do this work? It's like, okay, if there is some deep trauma in your relationship, absolutely go to couples counseling, right? There is a place and space for everything. And really I'd say the difference here is like your relationship is good and you desire it for it to be great. And you are aware that there are ways that you block from receiving love, that you desire to more self-express, that you desire, there's a way you desire to be in your relationship. And that's the difference, right? I think it's also worth really like emphasizing, you know, when you come into in a circle, yes, you have me guiding and leading, but then you also have a second coach for your group. So you have two coaches, me and Shannon in, in the relationship group and myself and Eleni in the group of women calling in love. So you have two coaches supporting you. And 
you know, from my point of view, I could see what your individual magic is. You know, I see like Eleni really brings in um, expertise around like behavior, like behavior patterns and communication skills, right? And Shannon, you have this way <laughs> of bringing so much self-compassion and these beautiful like metaphors and reflections that just open things up for the women and really you have a way of helping them access their hearts, even just as a participant. So I'm excited to see what you do, you know, when you're really truly there as a, in a support role. Do you ladies just want to touch on like, what is your unique magic? Like this is kind of your opportunity to brag. Like, what is it that you bring? <laughs> so people here are pretty aware of what I do and how I am and, you know, what I share, but like, who is Eleni as a coach and who is Shannon as a coach and the unique gifts that you're going to bring to inner circle? Yeah, thank you for that. Um, well, I, I'm a communication and leadership coach. Um, I've done psychology in my bachelor's. I was a behavior therapist for six years. And I've done all kinds of things related to communication. And my master's was in um, instructional design. So it's essentially helping people translate their expertise into courses and programs. And so What's really fun in my, um, I guess, support with Diana is that as she's fully embodied the expertise of everything she's teaching, you know, having been a learner in her program and now having been a coach as well, when you're a learner, sometimes you see that and you're like, I want it, but you're like, it's elusive. It's, it's not, I can't touch it I can't feel it yet I don't get it right and so because calling in love is such this sense of newness all the time what I really feel that I bring there is kind of like bridging the gap of like okay I've been through the program I know Diana I understand her her concepts her notions what she believes is valuable to offer and it's like making it less elusive making it more tangible creating analogies that you can relate to and feel like, okay, well, although I feel like I'm not there yet, how can I somehow feel like I can experience it now? And so that's a lot of the work that I do. Um, and I also really like to help the way you communicate with yourself, right? It's, it's the language that you're using when you're talking about what you're desiring, what, what you believe you're worthy of, the, the words, like, what does something mean to you? Like a lot of times when we start dating, like, well, I don't know, you know, if, if I could call it a relationship or I don't know if we should say that we're dating. And I ask, well, what does dating mean to you? And you might need to ask that to him, right? A lot of the thing, a lot of the times we have our own definitions for things and it's not something that we speak about. And so a lot of my work is going to be like, okay, well, let's, let's take a step back and say like, okay, well, what is your definition of this yeah. thing? And that bridges a lot of the, the little gaps that you feel when you're like, well, why can't I express myself or why can't I be understood? It's because of these things that we don't often think about. So, so that's, that's what I bring. Yeah. <laughs> Much more. I mean, among many things, right? Among many gifts. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> I want to add to what I think you bring, having seen you and been supported by you. You know, Eleni is so empathetic and like really so beautiful at reflecting back what she hears and listening so deeply and cares. Like, you know, you are deeply cared for in this program. You are deeply loved by Eleni and Diana, but it's, you know, so overflowing you just feel overflowing <laughs> with love when with, when Lenny you know is supporting you and I have personally you know received the bounty of her wisdom as it relates to human design which is such a cool modality to play with mm -hmm. inside of the program and so we explore that a little bit too and you know there's just so many ways in which Lenny is magic so <laughs> Ooh, <I appreciate> that <laughs> and who are calling in love have such a beautiful role model. And, you know, I think there is something to say about being inspired by the fact that you have experienced what it is that those folks are experiencing. You've been on all the journey, just the same. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's so cool. 
<laughs> my my gifts I do think like I I I like to imagine myself as a soul seer you know I can see underneath whatever words are being spoken to hear what is really yearning to come out underneath all the words that are being spoken so especially inside of the calls that we have where I can see see all the ways in which a person communicates you know not all of it is words and I just sort of can reflect back the things that are not being said sometimes mm-hmm. if it feels right right um and I do have kind of a bit of a magical way of intuiting when someone is ready to go a bit deeper or maybe look at some place they haven't considered looking for even just a little bit more clarity on something that they've been, um, you know, that that factors in. (laughs) But when it comes to support and holding space, you know, really, it feels so effortless to hold space for the people who are on this journey. It feels like Mm -hmm. I was born to do this work (laughs) and to sit and in circle with women as they explore their relationships. If I could do this all day, every day, I would like love my life. (laughs) Daniel calls it deep and meaning. I mean, I call it deep and meaningful conversations. So this really feeds my soul for deep and meaningful conversations. I have like a bottomless hunger for that kind of connection. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Let me just say this one thing. One of the things that's so magical about being around you Shannon is the way you see someone can really be deeply healing for that person like being seen in from your lens like the way you even reflect back to me or see me mm-hmm. even though you're like clients you know is like it 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 shakes something up in me and it brings this like layer of like fierce love for myself I'm like okay I can hear she means this so deeply the way she sees me is so beautiful like I can feel that I can feel that and I can harness that and I can I can see that in myself she you express it so clearly that it's like but of course I'm amazing like the way she hadn't just expressed that to me of course I'm amazing Mm -hmm. and can we just see what it's like to be held in such deep reverence and love like for six months when you are held that deeply in love you cannot help but alchemize fear into love maybe not every single element of fear but like a lot of it (laughs) yeah and yeah that's what that's what I was gonna say too but I also think it's uh, what I see is especially in the challenging moments it's it's like you have this way Shannon of of making us feel even beautiful in those moments you know in the in the hardest moments possible where we feel ashamed or unattractive or like we don't get why something is happening you have this way of bringing the love back to ourselves for the way you reflect you have a very artistic way in in posing very powerful questions And I think most of all, you have this sense of bringing a deep humanness and relatability so that we feel that whatever we're going through, like, it's not that off, you know, it's not (laughs) that far fetched. It's something that we all go to. And I think there's something so grounding and uniting and just welcoming about having somebody in you know in your in your court when you're going through moments like that so yeah yeah thank you I love that I want to be really um aware of your time and everyone's time why don't we just close it up to you with who do you both really see this program as being for well one thing I wanted to say that I've wanted to say and I think this is a good time to kind of talk about it is that you know, when we look at our lives, a love is a part of our lives. It's a dimension through which we can express ourselves. And when we look at, you know, deepening our practice as it relates to our love, then it affects all the areas. See, we're, we're like an ecosystem. And especially, okay, I'm just going to speak about women in relationships and particularly, you know, in families, you know, when you heal inside of your own self, whatever it is that 
it has you, has me anyway, inside of old patterns, my whole family is healed. You know, everything about what I learn, I, I pass on to my kiddos in the ways that I raise my kids. And so, you know, this isn't just healing my own love. It's healing the love that I, I will, you know, give to my children and they will give to their children. So I think that as it relates to, you know, folks who are ready for this work, it's folks who do wish to have this like transformative experience as it relates to their own love with their partner, but writ large. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think, so if I'm talking specifically to women who want to call in love, I think it's, it's women who are aware that there's room to do something different than they've done before and to be open to that. Um, I think it's also for, for women who are open to learn and open to be supported by other women as well. Um, women who are ready to believe that they're worthy, that what they really yearn for is possible for them. Um, and, and women who are ready to be seen, you know, to be seen and to, to really feel a shift in them and be supported because that's what it is. I think one last thing is, is a sense of like investment as well, right? Investing your time, investing your energy, seeing this almost as like the biggest gift you can give yourself, not because of the person you wanna call in, but because of who you want to be for yourself. And I think that this is what inner circle is first for, for this, that, that specific pod, you know, women are very eager to like either feel more comfortable with dating or start dating again, or have been dating and want to find the partner. And yeah, all of that is great. But even as I'm in a nine month relationship, that is not my biggest gift. The biggest gift is how I feel about myself in this relationship. Yeah, I so, was going to say the same. It's, you know, really yeah. about being in a committed relationship with yourself and learning how to do that in a way that is so honor honoring of you, who you are and where you are on your journey. And, and that's an unfoldment. And that yeah. you know, if you're in committed relationship with yourself, it's worth, it's worth being curious, <laughs> being curious and being willing to try new things, right? Like, you know, Diana and Eleni and I are going to like nudge, you know, how would it feel to try this? And like, I think the women who are meant to be in the program are the ones who are willing to all, to be willing to, to play, <laughs> to play, to try, to experiment, to like learn, to grow. Yeah. I couldn't have said it better. I'm just like, yes, yes, yes. It's, it's like, who, how do I imagine to experience love? And then who do I imagine myself to be in that experience? And this is the journey of becoming her, right? Mm -hmm. the, the journey of really stepping into her shoes and then all that she is, right? Starts to come into her world, like throughout the six months and after. So I love, okay I love it. You still have fear while you start. It's okay. okay like. You don't have to believe that, oh yeah, I'm totally ready. <laughs> you can also be like, oh my gosh, I'm totally terrified. That sounds so amazing. And I'm so like, just being willing to honor all the feelings. Knowing that it's time for more, knowing that you, that it's time for you, essentially is, is what I would say. It's time for you to, to invest in you is, is yeah. That's what it feels like. And the rest will come because you're not alone. Thank you, ladies, so much. I appreciate this conversation and both of you. And I'm so excited to journey with you both for six months and all the beautiful women we've already called in and those who will, who will feel called and join us and, and dive into this journey with us. So, so well, much. Thank you. Thank you for trusting us. And we're very excited for all our new circle and who we're going to meet in May. We're very excited. No. <laughs>
if anybody watching this is curious, I've dropped the link below where you can express your interest. You can also feel free to get in touch with myself and I'm just going to go ahead and say, or Shannon or Eleni and just get the conversation started. Remembering Shannon supports the women, will be supporting the women um, who are in relationship, established relationship. And Eleni is both alongside me, um, supporting the group of women who are calling in love. And also if you're, you know, you're in early relationship stages and it's not quite established that would be the group for you so if you want to get in touch with one of them and ask questions or myself we welcome you with open arms 100 percent hi ladies <laughs>